Welcome to another thing. I'm Larry Menti. There is a fight to keep the Internet a haven for free speech away from the ever watchful eyes of the government. But so far, Internet free speech advocates are fighting a losing battle as the government demands more and more access to our social media accounts, search history and other online activities. The FBI says it needs access to fight terrorism, law enforcement to fight bullying, sex trafficking, and child pornography. So what is the constitutional line between free speech and safety? That's our topic today, and we begin with Ellen Kaloje. Ellen. Thank you, Larry. Two recent decisions involving the Internet could have ramifications around the world. The first involves net neutrality, which basically means keeping the Internet open for everyone. The second involves Europe's decision to ban hate speech on all social media sites. It is basically to combat any sort of hate speech that is derived towards race, color, religion, descent, or national or ethnic origin. Facebook banned me because I commented, I asked, I asked, oh, what, what is hate speech? Uh, and I said, is this word hate speech? Is this word hate speech? I, say, I think I said, uh, you know, like taco, is taco considered hate speech now? But silencing free speech is only the start of, of a very slippery slope. The internet was buzzing after the European Union reached an agreement with Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Microsoft to take down hate speech within 24 hours. In this case, what it is, is companies trying to prevent hate speech on their platforms and taking proactive steps to prevent speech on those on those platforms. David Perry chairs the Department of Communication and Digital Media at St. Joseph's University. He says Europeans view hate speech in a much different light than Americans. In the United States we believe, oh, you should be able to go on the internet and say whatever you want anytime. Um, of course, we really don't believe that, like we take down child pornography, for instance. Um, but in the European context, they think, well, speech should only be allowed in as so much it doesn't violate also the sort of community values that we uphold, right? Like you shouldn't be able to be derogatory towards ethnic groups. The second decision involves net neutrality. A federal appeals court ruled the FCC does have the authority to block the so-called internet fast lanes. AT&T and Comcast wanted to be able to charge you more to view certain sites and less to view others. And the FCC said, no, you can't. They took them to court and the FCC won. And so now net neutrality governs ISPs within the United States context, pending if uh, an appeal. Now, AT&T vows to take this battle on net neutrality all the way to the Supreme Court. Reporting for Another Thing, I'm Ellen Kaloje. To talk more about net neutrality and the government wanting more control over the Internet is Donna Roman Hernandez, who is host of Tough Justice Radio and a retired police captain from Caldwell, New Jersey. Thank you so much for being here. Wonderful opportunity. Thank you. There seems to be two distinct sides in this argument. There is a side, the net neutrality people who are saying the Internet wants to be free and there should be no government intervention. And then there's law enforcement who says, wait a second, we know that the Internet is used for illegal activity, we need to be involved with the internet. Where do you come down? I believe they do need to be involved, but privacy issues also should prevail. We as citizens of this country, we have rights, and those rights should not be encroached upon, where they might go through other means to get our IP, you know, IP addresses and things of that nature. I'm not on board with that, but I do believe law enforcement does have a role to play in social media. Since you brought up the IP addresses, that's a big deal right now. There is an appropriations bill that the FBI, through legislators, snuck in an amendment. And that amendment is that they can use national security letters, which is some power that was given to them under the Patriot Act, where they could force companies to give them information about all of us. That's already happening without a warrant. Yes. They want to expand that power so that they can get IP history, where you visited, your search history, without a warrant. How do you feel about that? When I was in law enforcement, I would be for it. But in post-retirement, I, I see things through a, a different lens. Um, we are in an era of terrorism. So the FBI does want to know all those types of things. But we still have our amendment rights that protect us. So we should be somewhere, we have to come to an agreement about the extent of what they can get without a warrant. It, it seems like a violation of the Fourth Amendment uh, of, of illegal search, search and seizure. Why would they want to get around getting a warrant? Why do they want to usurp the judicial process to get, to just be able to get this willy-nilly? I can't speak on behalf of law enforcement, 
but I can speak just from personal experience. Sometimes there are exigent circumstances where you really do need information uh, due to maybe an, an active shooter situation as we had, and we do see where there are people from other countries that are here performing terrorist acts. So it might be in that moment, but if there's a space of time, I, I think you should just apply for the warrant. Right, James Comey, when he testified before Congress, the head of the FBI, when he testified before Congress, he was saying that a lot of times that there's some subtlety in searches and that y you may not know right away. And yeah. that's why they, when they have someone of interest, they want, to be able to, they want to be able to look at their Internet searches. My argument back, and I'd love to hear how you feel about it, is if you have someone of interest, then you should be able to get a warrant. Well, a person of interest means that they may be developing the interest as well. It might not be a solid interest. They have a group of people that they're looking at, or one individual in particular, and they want to circumvent the judicial system because it depends on what, how the judge perceives the request for the warrant. Now, there's another argument to be made, uh, pro-FBI, pro-law pro enforcement's position and the governmental position on this, is if you're not doing anything wrong, then why are you worried? Mm -hmm. Who cares if they have this power? What do you say to that? Ultimate power in any format in any governmental agency is bad. We have fought so many years for the right to control the power and to have rights as individuals. We can't let our rights go out the window. That's how I feel about it. This is fascinating to me because I thought you were going to have a different position. Uh, but you say you would have had, would you have still held that position when you were in law enforcement? When I was in the game, in law enforcement, day to day, exigent circumstances really popped up a lot more than people would, would really want to admit to. But in retirement, uh, my view is skewed a little bit because as a talk show host, as someone who writes for law enforcement publications, you really have to keep it real. This is a reality-driven society. And to take rights away from individuals without the basis, without the evidence, even when I was in law enforcement, I was, I was not for that. We know that terrorists, we know the pedophiles, we know that sex traffickers, yeah. we know that bullies, we know that a lot of people that are engaging in illegal activity like to use social media. And, and there's been people in the past that after they committed terrorist attacks, like the San Bernardino terrorist, where people said, look, they left a history, they left a trail, why didn't you catch them? So I can understand the frustration that you must have felt too when you were in law enforcement, where you go, I know this is a bad guy. I know we can get him if we just had the power to be able to find out what he's been doing all this time. Yes. Doesn't that give the argument that yes, we should give them that power? We need evidence. You have to have the evidence to prove the case. So if your case is flawed in the beginning and you circumvent the judicial system or you don't have the probable cause or the evidence to substantiate the prosecution of that case, you have nothing. So you have to have a strong base and a strong base is not taking away someone's rights. They're insured by the Constitution, and you have to stay within, you know, the protocol of what you need to do to develop your case, the evidence, and it, it, it's, it's a greater proposition than it seems on its face. You have to look at the history, but you have to get the right uh, documents in place, and you can't let someone's rights be put to the side because you're going to rush to judge. But under the Patriot Act, we've already given some of that up. Uh, well, we, when I say we, I mean Congress has already given some of that up, and they, ha they can usurp warrants for certain things. Let me just, before we move on, uh, in Europe, they, uh, the Facebook, Google, several other Internet properties have gotten together and said, you know what, we're going to help you in law enforcement. We'll monitor for hate speech, and we'll take it down, and we'll report it to you. These are private companies that are doing this, and they're allowed to do that as long as they let you know, and we go to them voluntarily. Is that a solution? I think the problem started when a protocol wasn't put in place to begin with with social media. It seemed to be a playground, a free-for-all. You could say whatever you wanted to say to whomever you wanted to say it. Now the problem is that's been the history, and you want to make change. But how is that change impacting the, the businesses? I mean, they are a business. They do make money. 
So how does that impact that? You have to look at the history also. All right, thank you so much for thank being you. here. I appreciate it. Donna Roman Hernandez, host of Tough Justice Radio, toughjusticeradio.com, and a retired police captain from Caldwell, New Jersey. When we come back, we're going to continue our discussion on net neutrality with someone who believes the Internet should be free, away from the watchful eyes of our government. When another thing continues.